This month's video is brought to you by HostGator. Don't forget your coupon code, BostonWPMeetup, for $9.94 off your first month. Alright guys, um, thanks for coming out tonight. This is the Boston WordPress Meetup. My name is James Gletti. This is Kurt Ng. We are the organizers. Um, Wi-Fi code is up there. Definitely check out the Boston WP website if you haven't. We relaunched it. We have some cool features like forums and job boards and interesting stuff. Um, we're doing. We're going to release some updates to that in the coming weeks. So definitely send your suggestions and feedback. Um, we're on Twitter. There's a hashtag for this event. We've been doing this for like let's see two years now. We have just about 700 members. We're really happy. Um, so thanks for coming along and thanks for supporting the group. We will not have a December meetup. Um, we're always looking for speakers and topics, so if you know anyone that wants to speak, if you would like to speak, um, it could be a beginner, it could be advanced, um, doesn't matter, definitely contact us. Uh, I that. Feedback, so help at Boston WP. If you have interesting questions that you would like us to explore and try to help you with, definitely email help at Boston WP. We are uh, working on an interesting project that we may be able to leverage that and help you, so technical stuff. You know, we might not get back to you right away, but uh, just, just hang tight and, and we'll get to you soon. <laughs> and, uh, lastly, sponsors. Um, so speaking of sponsors, besides Microsoft, uh, we have our first sponsor, HostGator. Um, we're very proud to announce this. Um, HostGator has over 500,000 uh, 500, WordPress installs. Um, they have a very easy one-click install on their hosting system, and the, here's the discount code. So you enter the code Boston WP Meetup. Um, if you guys are looking for hosting or deciding on uh, a new hosting service, definitely check this out. It saves you nine ninety uh, nine ninety four off your first month's package. Um, I think your total bill is one cent. Um, they have a forty five day money back guarantee, so give it a try. And there is something else. Um, that we found out. Let's see if we can minimize this here. Um, they are lo located on our Boston WP page down here at the bottom. And since it's Cyber Monday, they actually have a 50% off sale, so it only lasts for about five hours and 22 minutes. So um, <laughs> just, just saying, just throwing it out there. So um, if you want a really cheap hosting plan that's really reliable, just definitely check them out. And uh, tonight, our first speaker, or actually our only speaker, um, sorry, we, we normally have two. So, um, Jeremy Clark, he hails to us from uh, Montreal, Canada. And um, Jeremy's very active in the WordPress community. Um, he helped run WordCamp Montreal, and he's an active developer and designer, um, so much. But uh, tonight, he's gonna be giving a talk about widgets. <coughs> So, in the, yeah, here. Um, this is my website. Uh, you can go to jeremyclark.org, and the slides for the talk are the, on the first post about uh, WordCamp New York. So, if you want to look at the code or anything there, it's right here. It's up on SlideShare, so you can download it if you want. Working on both sides, yeah. yeah. And I can. So everyone's doing good. Uh, they introduced me already, but I have a slide for it. So I have a degree in communications that was uh, relevant, but I taught myself uh, how to do WordPress and HTML for the most part. Uh, I've been using. Uh, the w designing website since 2003. Uh, took a brief stop in movable type, uh, and then switched to WordPress in 2004 when everyone else did. Uh, the version at that time was 1.2, and uh, there was no such thing as widgets, and there was also no such thing as pages. So that's how long I've been using it and watching it evolve. Uh, I work on a nonprofit website called Global Voices. Uh, it's basically what I do with all of my time. We have dozens of sites, because we have language sites, and I do a lot of programming around uh, making the multilingual aspect work well, because 
as some of you may have noticed, WordPress and multilingual websites aren't a great match uh, compared to most of the other things you can do with WordPress. Uh, what we do is talk about what people are saying in citizen media around the world, so what bloggers in China are saying about issues there, different things like that. Really great site if you uh, are interested in uh, international issues and blogs and stuff, then you should check it out. So uh, today I'll be talking about widgets and sidebars. I'll start at the essence of them and work into how to use them with some code examples and also uh, some ideas for what to do with them. Uh, the ideal audience would be someone who knows HTML, who knows uh, enough PHP to do the template tags and things like that from WordPress. Uh, but if you're not that person and you don't know the code, uh, try to listen to the essence of what I'm saying, because even if you're just choosing a theme by someone else or paying someone else to program themes for you, if you understand where and when and why to use widgets and sidebars as part of your website, then you, can, you know what to look for and what to ask for. So uh, hopefully it's relevant to everyone and you don't fall asleep while I'm showing you the code. So what is uh, a widget? Uh, silly definition from the dictionary. Uh, that basically defines it as something that you don't know what it is. It's a way of naming something that's going to be specifically ambiguous. Uh, in the case of WordPress, it's used to describe a uh, generic unit of interface content, uh, and specifically some stuff that goes in one of your sidebars of your website. Uh, so in Drupal, they call this the exact same thing blocks, which is another good way of uh, describing it. You could also call them boxes. Uh, but the important thing to remember is that uh, they can be anything you want, uh, but that you're controlling. Um, and then, oh, why is it? Okay. So, and then the other, just for the sake of argument, uh, a widget is also the type of widget. So each time you use a widget, you know, it is the widget in your sidebar on your site. But there's also, you know. The different kinds of widgets are themselves widgets, like the category widget, like the, the general like platonic class of widget. And uh, yeah, does anyone has anyone not familiar with this? Like what? How you add a widget to a sidebar? Because uh, that's what the widgets are the, in appearance, and then widgets. That's where you can go and add them to whatever sidebars have uh, been registered in your theme. So what is a sidebar? The first thing it is, is a terrible, terrible name for what they do inside WordPress. Uh, they're not at all just for the side of things. The word bar is not very productive in describing them. Uh, but that's what they're called, and that's also how the code refers to them. So I'll continue calling them sidebars, uh, despite the fact that I actually prefer widgetized space, widgetized zone, or widgetized area. I think widget is really what's good about the naming of this, and sidebar is what's horribly wrong and coming from when sidebars were added at a time when pretty much all WordPress sites had the content and the sidebar and it's not at all like that anymore. So really what it is is any place in a theme that the user controls and can add widgets to. So anytime you want the person using the theme to decide what will go there instead of you, you use widgets. Uh, they're also optional and by which I mean that if the theme is coded with this intention, then you don't need to have the sidebar present, and you can have sidebars in places where, if it's empty, it still makes sense. And that's a great way to make themes that are really extensible, so that if someone just wants it to look like a blog, it just looks like a blog, but if they want it to look like a fancy storefront with a big slider, they can add widgets in that space, and all of a sudden the layout changes. So that's worth noting, uh, and, the, and specifically you know, the easiest way to give a theme user control over its layout and content. And without the need to edit the template files. When you take a theme and, and you know HTML and PHP, you can do whatever you want with it, but you always want to avoid editing the template as much as possible. When you edit those template files, you create an inconsistency between you uh, and the theme. If, you, if there's a WordPress updates and the theme breaks, the theme creator will often release a new version of the theme that fixes the problem and you can install it on your site, and now it'll work again. If you change the files, now you have a special job in front of you to figure out your changes and move them over to the new one or what have you. Uh, 
but we all, it's immediately obvious why having a sidebar and the widgets in the sidebar is useful, but it's, one of the things I'm gonna harp on here is that that's not just how you should use sidebars. Anytime you wanna edit a theme, ask yourself, instead of editing these files, or even if I'm gonna edit the files, why not add a sidebar in that space instead of the stuff, whatever that was, it would be better off as a sidebar and you put the stuff in a widget because it's the content of the site, not the, not the design of the site. Templates should not ever have any content. Uh, and a good question to ask yourself is, when you, whenever you edit a template file, would anyone using this theme, like everyone who would ever use this theme, should want your upgrade? Otherwise, you're doing something wrong and it should probably be a widgetized space instead. If you're ever typing in the sort of copy of your client's product or whatever it is, you're doing, like, you should find another way because you should keep the theme clean and uh, abstract. So here's the straw mans of sidebar. I already kind of mentioned this, but uh, you know, the content on the left, the sidebar on the right, it's the tradition, it's why it's called that, but it's not at all uh, descriptive of what's possible. So here's a better example of sidebars where you can see this fun section at the top with the photo and the call to action. Uh, that's a sidebar, and uh, you know, if there's no widgets here, this part jumps up. The section below, you can see there's three widgets here. That's a sidebar as well. Uh, and the, the theme has these sidebars registered, and you can see on the right the three different sections and the different widgets inside of them. And in this case, there's actually a third sidebar below here, because after all this, you have the sort of blog traditional layout underneath, and it has its own sidebar on the side with specifically blog-related archives and stuff. And this is actually a theme that you can get on WordPress.com, and uh, my brother was using it for his bookstore, and then I moved him to his own website, downloaded that theme, and then added the sidebars in, because that theme was really limited. It's beautiful. Uh, it had like a great, like, look, look like a book, and it's a bookstore, it's appropriate. Uh, but it was just a boring blog layout, and he didn't want to have like the store hours and location in the sidebar of the blog, it didn't feel good. But it was pretty easy to add this stuff in and take advantage of the whole rest of the layout. Uh, and he can change the content himself whenever he wants. He can change the opening hours if he changes his policy. Uh, he can change the map if he wants, whatever. So uh, when you're using widgets in sidebars, you start off with this set of default widgets uh, that WordPress gives you. For the most part, they describe the major features of WordPress like list of pages, list of recent posts, uh, the calendar that no one ever uses, it's really awful, um, the recent comments, which is really mediocre. Um, but you know, they're here, you've used them. When you're setting something up, you wanna ask yourself, which of these widgets might be helpful? Try them out, see what they do, see if they're useful, try to think of how to use them. Uh, but then you can also get ones from plugins. So you'll install a plugin. Some plugins, all they do is add a single widget, and they're like, really nice and lightweight plugins, and if you want something, those are pretty easy to, to use. They rarely involve a dependency long term, like you can just turn it off and just lose one widget, it's not the end of the world. Um, there's also plugins that just give you a ton of widgets, like here's my suite of like widgets that are missing from WordPress, uh, that would be great, like there's a hundred. Some of them do one thing, but like in an incredible detail, like recent posts is kind of lame, it doesn't have a lot of options. But I know there's several widgets that just give you like what posts, like what day, that give you a ton of options to limit the posts that are gonna be shown so that you can have a really specific set of uh, your content, like your interviews or whatever. Um, and you can also define your own widgets. Uh, and sometimes what you want is really just to replace a mediocre default widget like recent comments with something better. Uh, uh, and often, a plugin that isn't really about widgets will have a widget, like you have an events plugin, it's probably gonna give you a widget so that you can show your upcoming events. So when you add plugins, ask yourself, is there an, a widget I could use that I could be integrating into my site uh, now that I've installed this plugin? And when you're shopping around with similar plugins, ask yourself, which of these has a widget? That's the one I want. The one that's telling you to go to your template file and edit it, you need to ask yourself, why is that person not having a widget because a, a good uh, plugin developer knows how to make a widget and will do so because it's the obvious choice. So the text widget is underrated sometimes and it's really, really useful because the other widgets uh, can be really limiting in terms of what they'll give you, like 
you don't have a lot of control, and sometimes you just want to tell it exactly what you want, and text widgets are perfect for that, because anything made of HTML can be shown, and really that's anything on the web. Uh, uh, one way to get around the fact that often people don't know HTML, uh, your client doesn't know HTML, maybe you don't know HTML, is uh, open up a draft post in, or a draft page, and use the visual editor to compose whatever it is, you can add images, you can add links, whatever you need, and then switch to the HTML tab, copy whatever's there, and paste it into the text widget. Uh, it's a bit of a complicated jumping through hoops, but uh, there's no, I don't know of any way to add a visual editor inside of the text widget, which would be nice, but those visual editors are really tricky. Uh, and they're really unstable when you have more than one on a given page, which is why I think that hasn't been achieved yet. Uh, but it's pretty easy to do that, and even your clients, you, if nothing else, you can just say to them, uh, when you want to change the widget, go edit that page, and then tell me, and I'll go copy the widget for you. At least that way you don't have to negotiate all the content with them. Uh, and then a, a final point, uh, JavaScript embed code, things like uh, on the Twitter website, you go and you say, give me this little widget that shows me the recent tweets, and that's not a WordPress widget, it's just like a general web one, and uh, you could add it in a post, and then it automatically fetches the recent tweets and shows them. And there's a million examples of things like that. And with uh, text widgets, you can use them for those things. Uh, instead of inserting them in the template itself, you can put them in a widget and uh, save yourself having to install a whole Twitter WordPress plugin. Uh, and that can be a mixed bag, because sometimes those JavaScript include things are really awful, and they slow down your site, and they make it worse, and you'd be better off with the plugin, especially if you're really serious about whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, but sometimes it can save you a big headaches, especially if you don't have full control over the website. If someone else is managing it, and you're managing the content, you can add a lot of features through the text widget content. Uh, one caveat is that WordPress.com does some heavy filtering of the, of the text widgets, and sometimes if you put in some weird JavaScript, and save, it's going to disappear because they're worried that you're going to do some uh, hacking and exploitation of, like people will come to like, you can put something in here on your own site that when people come to your site, you hack into their computer and install a virus or something, and they're worried that you're going to do that. So on WordPress.com, the rules are a little different, so a little more limiting, but if you control the WordPress install and you're an admin, you should be able to put all kinds of stuff in the text widgets. So, Jared? Yes. Do you have any particular text um, well, text widget is the default, is just like what part of the system. Oh, I so that's the plain one. The plain Do I have any widgets I would recommend? Not specifically. Like, it would depend on your need. Though, so much of the time, the text widget can solve your problems if the content doesn't have to be dynamic. You need other widgets if you want something really dynamic that's going to do some weird stuff like uh, show the users who post the most often or something like that. Uh, so, the way. I'm going to go through the process of registering and displaying widgets. Uh, the first thing to know, just for those who don't do any theme development, uh, is that there's one file in your, you know, when you download a theme, it's a folder full of PHP files. And one of them is called functions.php. Uh, and it's the one place in your template where you put PHP code that isn't directly related to a specific uh, display, a display page. You know, you have index.php or the home page. And, archive.php for the archives. Functions.php uh, is where you put more abstract PHP code, and uh, for, for non-programmers, one of the most common uses is for register sidebar, which lets you declare a sidebar. And so it's in, uh, yeah, and you can do anything. You can do in a plugin. You could also register sidebars in a plugin if you really wanted to. Uh, and the important thing is just to know that this is where you look for it. If you go to your functions.php, there's probably already some sidebar definitions that you can copy and paste uh, and just change some of the settings I'm going to show you. But that's the functions.php file, and that's where the next few slides I'm going to show code, and it goes in the functions.php file. So the, the, the first thing you need to do is register the sidebar. And here is the example of the minimum possible definition. And it's a little bit scary to look at. It's not the easiest bit of template code in WordPress. You know, like there's other ones like the underscore title that are just, you can't, it's hard to get it wrong almost. Uh, in this case, there's a bit of funny formatting, but you can copy and paste it and, and try not to be intimidated because if you can 
get a handle on it, you're gonna really have a lot more power inside your theme that you won't have if you miss this, and you don't really need to learn PHP to be able to do this. You just need to know how to copy and paste and follow these instructions. So the, the function is register sidebar, again, should be uh, register widgetize space or something more useful, but it's called sidebar. Uh, you pass in arguments uh, in the array format, and that's what this is. Here we're saying this is an array, and an array in PHP is like a list of values. And we're saying register sidebar, and you know sometimes in between the brackets you put the arguments, you put the values of what you want to fetch or what you want to show or whatever. In this case it needs several pieces of information. The name, which is uh, the label uh, for what we're going to call this sidebar, and then the ID, which is uh, like, a, like a URL, you know, lowercase, no special characters, a simple slug name that we'll use to reference it directly in the code. Whereas this is a display name that we're going to use to show people what its name is. Um, and those are the two that you absolutely must have. A uh, name, because in the, in the admin side, it needs to be labeled somehow. And ID, because we need to be able to refer to this specific sidebar so that we can say later, show us this specific sidebar. If you didn't have an ID, uh, they would all be overwriting each other. Uh, and so in the array, just as a little bit more background on array, you know, what we're saying here is, in this array there's two items, one called name and one called ID, and the name's value is this, and the ID's value is this. Uh, and the formatting is important, like these little equals and then the arrow, so you have to get that right. If you get that wrong, your site's gonna complain and you're gonna keep working on it until you fix it. Uh, but that's just, hopefully that's not too bad. Um, so there's more potential arguments. So we have the name and the ID at the, at the top here, and then there's some more. So uh, I already covered name and ID. The description is an explanation of what the sidebar is and what it's going to do. And people are going to see that in the admin when they're dealing with the widgets. Uh, they're going to see that text. So you want to explain <coughs> to them what to expect from it. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever used a theme and it has lots of sidebars, lots of places you can put widgets but they have really weird names, like sidebar one, sidebar two, sidebar three, and sidebar four. But where does this go when you start adding widgets into them and then reloading the site and seeing where they are and trying to find them? Sometimes you can't because it's like, oh, it's only there when you're on a category page or a date page. And so you reload it, it's not on the home page, you're just confused, you try a different theme. Uh, this is really useful if you're creating themes and it's something that people should uh, take account for. It's my baby. I added like this didn't exist and I was complaining and I got it added to WordPress. Uh, so I'm still on a mission to get people to use it. Uh, in 2010, the, de the new default theme, it's actually really embarrassing because they did a terrible job. It's like main sidebar one is the type the name and then the description is main sidebar one. It's like, thanks guys. Like, what a terrible, terrible example of that feature. Uh, it actually makes it worse because it doesn't make sense. Uh, and then there's four more that define how the widgets are going to show up in the HTML. So the default is something like this where it's wrapped in a div, uh, class equals widgets. Uh, and there's some, in the defaults, there's some fancy things here that automatically get replaced with classes that reference what the, uh, what kind of widget it is. For people who know CSS, uh, it gives you the ability to target specific widgets with the CSS, so you want to kind of copy the defaults at least. Uh, but what they do is, before and after widget, define some HTML that's going to show up on every single widget before it starts and after it starts, so that you can depend on it when you're writing CSS and when, when you're going to look at the HTML. Uh, and then before title and after title is, each widget usually has a title and then the widget content. Uh, and if there is a title, it's going to show this sort of H3 and sometimes you can set it to H2, or you can make it whatever you want. And you can also go kind of crazy and add things that, that it's not expecting, but then sometimes it gets hairy. Uh, but using these creatively can get around uh, various issues with uh, the HTML not being what you expect or what you want. Uh, though often it's better to mess with the CSS than the HTML, uh, if you know how that works. So displaying a sidebar is a lot easier, um, and in this case, another minimum. And in, these ones go in the actual template files themselves. So in your index.php or your category.php, 
in the place where you want them to show, maybe in your sidebar.php for that one you know, default sidebar. Uh, and the function to call it is dynamic sidebar, really great name. Uh, should be show widgetize space, something like that, but it's called dynamic sidebar. And what that means is show me all the widgets in this one, and it uses the ID argument that we saw in the last definition. Uh, show me that if it exists. If there's some widgets in there, let's see them. If not, do nothing. Uh, in this case, if not, you know, you still get this div around it, which could be, be potentially awkward, but uh, there's no real way around it. Uh, yeah, so dynamic sidebar ID. Okay, and then uh, a more complicated but really common pattern for using sidebars is to show the sidebar if it exists, and if not, show something else. So a lot of themes will say, oh, if there's a sidebar, show whatever widgets they added. If there's no sidebar, uh, show these default widgets that we think are like a reasonable sort of compromise. So the recent posts and uh, the links from the like links tool, and then uh, you know the, the the archives and then the login thing. And the way you do that is instead of just calling dynamic sidebar, you use a PHP if statement. So you say if dynamic sidebar, and we're saying not here. So if you don't know PHP, just don't do this. But if you do. It's worth noting that you can, with dynamic sidebar, if there are no widgets, it will return false. Instead of showing something, it'll return false. So you can say, if this doesn't work out, if this is no, then show this other stuff. And uh, one thing I like to do is, uh, inside here, do some PHP logic that says, if the person is logged in and they're an administrator, show them a message that says, hey, this is a widget space. Go to the admin and add widgets. Uh, and they'll show up here. Uh, but alternately, you can just say, uh, you just have nothing. And then that would mean that if there's no widgets inside, it's just an empty space, and you have no worries. Uh, and you can have as many of them around the page as you want without ruining it if the user decides not to have widgets in there. Um, when there are no widgets, we can, yeah, cool. Any questions so far? Yeah. Uh, the first one, if ID, you have uh, the double quotes, but then everything after that you have in single quote. Is that, uh, oh no, you have double quote for HTML also. Um, yeah, uh, in, in HTML, double quote and single quote are exactly the same. Like, this is this part is HTML, and there's absolutely no difference between single and double quote. Yeah. Uh, the only important thing is that they match on either side of any given string. Right. In PHP, there is a difference uh, between the way it will process this if there was a variable name in here and it was single quotes, you'd see the variable name. If it's double quotes, it would resolve and you'd see the contents of the variable as output. Uh, but for the most part, you can switch back and forth whatever's most convenient. As long, except for the fact that inside here, if I had some double quotes, you know, weird things would happen. It would, ex it would think that it was ending and stuff. So that's usually how you want to think of it. Uh, but that's really not a priority that we're talking about now. Any other questions so far? Uh, so, in, in PHP, the, the, the sort of default it is control structure syntax is to have a uh, mush, mustache brackets uh, that opens, and then at the end here we have a, a closing mustache bracket. But the other way is to say if, and then have a colon, and then end it. I really like it. I find it a lot easier to read to have end it here, and it's really obvious. Everything in between here is going to happen only if this if statement is true. Yeah, well, yeah, and uh, otherwise it would just be one weird character mixed up in all these other weird characters. Some people have different opinions on that. If you don't know about that, I recommend checking it out because it really makes it a lot more readable. Cool. So, to review the various code things we saw, uh, we defined the sidebar, we added to a template, and then uh, we, the user of the site adds the actual content uh, into the sidebar. Until all three are done, nothing will happen. You can register a, wi uh, a sidebar, and you can add widgets to it, but it won't do anything unless it shows somewhere in one of the templates. And you can show a, a, a sidebar in a template. If you don't register it, 
it's going to do absolutely nothing. It might even give you an error. Uh, and if you register and show, but don't add any, it won't show up. Cool. Does that make sense? So when you get home, if you're like trying to recover, you know, come to this slide and just think, which part did I miss? Uh, and try and copy my uh, you know, syntax and stuff. The arrays can be tricky, but it's worth it. Um, so yeah, so now some, some things you can do with uh, once you get going with your multiple sidebars. And really, these are the same things that uh, premium themes and magazine themes, the, the main thing they do that non-premium themes don't do is add lots of sidebars in lots of places so that you can control it and have a more dynamic layout. So some of these things are incorporated in various themes, uh, but anything you have, it's not that hard to add a few sidebars in a few places and keep the rest of the, the site looking the same and take advantage of that. So a really obvious one is just having some sidebar on the home page near the top uh, to make it seem more dynamic, to make it feel less like a blog. No one wants to have their store have a website that just looks like a blog. Even if they're going to do some blogging, which is great to like just give visibility to their store, add, have some content. Uh, they don't want it to look like a blog when people arrive. Uh, in my case, my brother really just wanted to make sure that the location and opening hours were there because that's all anyone really wants when they for a bookstore. Like, it's a bookstore. If they wanted a website, they would uh, use Amazon. So, I did this. Uh, these two sidebars here only on the home page, uh, but when you come to an individual post, because he actually does book reviews and stuff, uh, it starts right away at the content, uh, and the sidebar is on the side, and really, this is the exact same thing you'd see below the line here, uh, but on the home page we manage it differently. Uh, huge detailed footer, uh, instead of having just like, this site is copyright 2010, uh, you have all kinds of stuff, you know, add whatever you want. Um, uh, 2010 has something like this where you, there's those sidebars for the footer and you can add whatever you want. You know, people have scroll wheels, stuff below the footer line, why not have everything they could possibly want? Why make them like dig around in your menus and stuff trying to find things? Give them, you know, give all the pages here so that once they get to the bottom, you know, they can search, they can find whatever information they need. Uh, it's a pretty easy way. Uh, though it can be tricky sometimes with floating. Oh yeah, and then um, the alt content trip, right? So if not sidebar, right? Then we just say site copyright, you know, powered by WordPress, whatever lame message you would have had in the sidebar, in the footer otherwise. Um, this is one that I really like that I haven't seen in very many other places. It's kind of like task dependent, you know, not every website is gonna have a, a good use for this. Uh, but this is the WordCamp Montreal website, and what, what, what I did is, on the home page, there's this special block at the top that's specifically for the home page. It's like our sort of about text. It doesn't make sense anywhere. It's kind of big. But then we have this like really vital information. The date and the thing to buy tickets, the map, how to get there, and the sponsors. And when someone is on reading one of our blog posts, this is still just as important. This is still the things that I want everyone to see as soon as they come to the site. So I showed the same sidebar, I used the same like uh, dynamic sidebar call in the actual sidebar of the single.php file, and the result is I only have to maintain one set of these widgets, but it shows in multiple locations. Uh, and I was actually doing the same thing on, uh, on this site, it has the same thing where these three widgets show, they're actually the first thing when you're looking at a blog post. Uh, and I don't know, I think that's, I, since I started doing that, I feel compelled to do it on almost every website because it's just so often what you want. Uh, and so often you end up not having things in the sidebar of certain screens because you already had them on the home page or something and you didn't think, and you don't want to keep two copies going because maybe they get out of sync or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but it can be really helpful. Yeah, so the content is always visible, but the position is optimized and you're not wasting space. Uh, though it can be tricky if like, like these ones are actually wider than this one and the overall effect is uh, that this image kind of juts off the edge because it's too wide. So you end up having to be more careful and you kind of want to make sure everything is like 33, 33, 33 width so that it balances out. Um, your, your trick there about using the uh, uh, visual editor and then copy and paste it, that'll work for links too, right? So if you could, I'm assuming you can put in yeah. a link yeah, yeah. You just 
copy it from the HTML side. Right. If you copy it from the visual side, when it pastes right. it in, it's going to make it plain text. Right. If you copy it, switch to HTML, copy that, paste it in, yeah. Images, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, In functions.php, I registered it once. Right. And what I did was I, I you, you give it a name that describes what it is, like, uh, you know, say, event info, uh, or whatever it is that describes this. And then in the two separate template files, I call dynamic sidebar once each. And how do you make it go, you know, that part of the With CSS. Okay. So, the, it's, it's the exact same CSS as if I was just going to have one sidebar here and one sidebar here. If you don't know CSS, uh, then both, either way, whether they're different sidebars or the same one, it's going to be really hard. Uh, vertical sidebars are easier for CSS just because things that are vertical are simpler than things that are horizontal. In HTML, when you want things to like line up and float left, anyone who knows CSS knows that there's a lot of problems that come up and it gets really complicated. Uh, and so that's the hardest part about inserting new sidebars into themes that don't expect them is that often there's a lot of CSS you have to debug before it works really well. But if you're capable of doing that, consider this trick. Uh, and try and learn some CSS and some floats because uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot better to have things floating than always top to bottom, which can get really boring. Any other questions so far? So uh, some more ideas along the same lines. Uh, obviously, uh, I talked about these examples had a lot of single and home page, uh, but this applies to any context. You could say, oh, when someone searches in my site, I want special content in the sidebar geared towards people who aren't sure what they want. Or uh, when someone's on a tag archive, uh, I want to make sure that they have an extra you know, gigantic cloud of all my tags that they can peruse and that they have maybe more archive information uh, than they would otherwise. Um, pages, uh, you could have one just for when someone is looking at a page so that you can have more page menus or whatever. Um, uh, you know, uh, below the post, before the comments on a single article, you might want to have a sidebar there so that when people are done the post, you can present them with more uh, random posts or whatever it is that you want to show them. Uh, single widget sidebars uh, can be a good way when you want the user of the site to be able to change a chunk of text, but with a really specific formatting, and you really just want them to be able to change what the text says. Um, one, you know, a common way is to use the description. Yeah, in WordPress default settings, you have the title and the description, and that's a kind of tagline. And so you let them change the tagline, and it says, like, you know, my great site, you know, uh, just under the WordPress web blog, yeah, I uh, But once you get beyond that, you can just add one, uh, add a sidebar in that space, and use the description, right, that explains to them what it is. Um, and I didn't, sh let me just go back, because I don't think I actually mentioned it. So this is the description. So in this case, homepage call to action, it says shows at the top of homepage only. And that's, gives, so now you're like, oh, what, what's going to happen? You know exactly what's going to happen. So in this case, you would say, um, you know, uh, header mission statement. And then you say, just add one text widget. It's going to show in the header, don't add more than one, uh, or it'll break. And maybe something like, don't add a title, or it won't look good. Um, though ideally, you want to set it up so that it works for the title. But, you know, there's no way to enforce the rules. But at least if someone comes to you and says, hey, what the heck, it's not working, it's not doing what you said. You're like, did you read this? Uh, because then you would know why it's broken and you could have fixed it yourself. And some people are smart enough to fix it themselves, so it's not just about proving wrong. But sometimes you need to just prove people wrong uh, so that you don't have to do all the work. Right. Uh, so be creative. You know, there's a lot of, when you have theme options, you know, on your theme, there's a settings page where you configure things. A lot of the time, a sidebar will fix, like a sidebar can replace a ton of those settings uh, and simultaneously give them a lot of new options that you could never have accounted for with uh, settings. Uh, and if nothing else, having default content with an optional sidebar 
lets you, you know, easy mode is just leave it alone. And advanced mode is start adding widgets and take responsibility for it yourself uh, at your own risk, you know, if you're really saying things to the public, especially. Um, there's also something I, I should have. Uh, yeah. um, I discovered something today. It's a little plugin called Widget Logic. Yeah, I was just going to mention that. And so, it's pretty cool. Yeah. <coughs> it's, I don't have a slide for it. I should. Uh, I actually don't use it very much, even though it's wicked. It's called Widget Logic. And what it does is it doesn't actually add any widgets or any sidebars, but it adds a setting on every single widget in the like, little widget screen where you can tell it situations where you want it to show. So you have to use PHP, I think, right? Yeah, but if I don't yeah. want something on my home page, I could have the, if it's I don't want it on the home page, the explanation bar. Yeah. Uh, so you need, it, it uses PHP syntax because it's a really, it keeps the plugin really lightweight and simple. But effectively, what it lets you do is say, only show this widget if we're on the home page or a search page. Or you can say, don't show this widget, like show this widget unless we're on the home page, or show this widget unless we're on the page called donate. And it's because it's a widget that says, why don't you give us your money? And you're like, well, when they're on the donate page, why would you have that widget? That makes no sense. So you say, if we're not on the donate page, show our fundraising widget. Uh, and it's really powerful, and uh, it's a bit tricky, but you can, anyone, if they put a little bit of time into it, can learn how to use it. And it can, that's a way of avoiding a ton of extra sidebars for things like just search or whatever, uh, is to use that widget logic plugin. And it's really popular and it's unlikely to stop working because there's so many people who are like addicted to it that someone would pick it up if it breaks. Because we all know when we're assessing plugins, we try not to use them because when they break, our lives are complicated. Uh, but widget logic is one of those plugins that we can probably any questions? Okay. So, some stuff that you need to watch out for because uh, you know there's always problems. The CSS, which is how you define how things look, can get really tricky. Uh, when you're adding new sidebars, you, you're changing the theme fundamentally often, and you could break it. Um, not only that, you know, cross-browser testing, seeing if it works in Internet Explorer. You sort of have to do all that stuff over again, especially if you're using floats and stuff with complex widgets. Um, each widget type may need you to massage the CSS a little bit to make it work. And this is a problem that probably already exists with any theme you download online, where the widgets look great, your text widgets look great, your recent post widgets, widgets work great. Uh, but then you, you use the widget that lists the users of the site, and it looks awful, and you have like a picture of the person, and then the text down and to the right for some reason of their name, and then the next person's picture is somehow beside the first person's name, and it just becomes awful. And you're like, what happened? And what happened is that the theme developer didn't actually try adding every single type of widget to see how it looks. Uh, similarly, a text widget, because it can contain any HTML at all, will often need smoothing. Uh, most themes, before their person releases them, they create posts that have all the things that people are likely to put in their posts. So they'll say, okay, does it look good with, uh, with an image, with a caption, that should look good, and if it's floated left or right or center, that should work, and they'll maybe make a list and some headings and make sure it all looks good. Uh, but there's a good chance they didn't try that for the sidebar. So you add a list in the sidebar, it doesn't look like the list in the post, it doesn't look good, there's too much space, it's, for some reason sometimes it's like huge and all caps and a different font, and you're like, what happened? Why, why is that the way it's going down? But So you need to sort of take responsibility for that, especially if you're releasing a theme or releasing it into the hands of someone else to uh, manipulate the content. You want to try as much as possible to predict both what might be in a text widget, so all the kinds of things that you could create with the visual editor, uh, as well as trying all the default widgets and seeing how they look. Uh, and then on top of that, custom widgets added by plugins can always look awful. Uh, often plugins try to use really generic HTML, so if you have your text widget scenarios covered, then the other widgets should work okay. But that can be a complication, and you want to pay attention to that 
if you're planning on handing it off, or if you just want it to be totally ready so you don't have to edit the theme anymore and you're just going to edit the widgets. Um, right. So a good way to help that is in the widget settings, I talked about the HTML before and the HTML after for the title and for the widgets. And if all of your widgets across your site are using the same basic set of things where the titles are H3s and the contents have a certain wrapper around them, it's a good idea to try and, when you're writing the CSS for it, and this is kind of like detailed CSS talk, you want to have it as generic as possible so that your widget stuff, all your widget stuff is being defined globally for the whole page. So that anywhere, any widget anywhere on the site is essentially being uh, controlled by the same group of CSS. That way, when you're doing this stuff, you only have to do it once. Uh, and just double check that nothing has changed as you move to a different part of the site for the widget. Uh, and that's also just good advice for everything about CSS. Uh, but in this case, it's something that's good to bear in mind. Uh, and then another thing, just a, a, a gotcha, is not all widgets have titles. Most of the default widgets have a title. A lot of widgets have a setting for the title so that you can change it to default. So it'll say categories, and you can change the title to say like uh, topics or whatever you like to refer to your categories as. Uh, but they don't have to have a title. And text widgets can be saved without a title. And this can have just really awkward effects where you have title, widget, title, widget, title, widget, widget. And those last few widgets, it's hard to see where one ends and the other begins. Uh, it can be confusing, and there's like, I've done things with the HTML before and HTML after to like achieve specific effects that the, the whole sidebar and footer would be broken if someone didn't have a title. So in that case, I said, in the description, I said, it needs to have a title. Uh, but mostly, they, and they, would, they wouldn't read it until the site was broken. And they'd be like, oh, it's broken. And they'd go back, like, what, what happened? And sometimes they'd email me first, but other times I think they went back, saw the message at that point, and then fixed it for themselves, which is what I consider like a success story. Uh, there's no ways right now in the widgets API to make demands. Like I think it would be really natural when you're registering widgets sidebars to say, this can only have three, max three. Or it needs to have at least two, or it won't work. Uh, but there's no way to do those things right now. So you have to use the description and just hope that they follow the rules and try and make it so that the site won't completely crash. Or make it so it crashes spectacularly and they fix it. Uh, <laughs> both are valid ways of doing it as long as the person is, it's not a mission critical site. Though if it's a mission critical site, you shouldn't have someone who doesn't know HTML using, uh, editing the widgets at all uh, for what it's worth. Questions so far? So, this is one technique that uh, I think, personally, I think this should be the default, but it's not currently, and there's no setting for it. And uh, so who knows what short, short codes are? Okay, so short codes are these things in square brackets like this. They go in the post, uh, and it lets you save the post in, it, with this simple thing like this in the captions. When you have a caption, it uses this, uh, and the gallery uses it, and lots of plugins gives you things like this. When you look at it, uh, when you look at the post on the front end, this will get replaced with some complicated HTML that you don't actually want in the editor because it makes a mess. Uh, so maybe there's short codes for things like showing recent posts inside another post. You don't actually, you know, you have the PHP in the post, that's a terrible idea. Instead you have this and it gets replaced on the fly. Um, and there's a lot of great uses for this and when you when you're, want something to be inserted in a post, it's the best way um, and just for widgets, there's no reason not to have those same powers incorporated. Uh, so what you do, it, it makes uh, widgets capable of almost anything because some code that you couldn't put in a widget, like you can put anything that's HTML, but there's lots of things that aren't just HTML if you want them to be dynamic. Uh, you need some PHP, but you can't put PHP in widgets, but you can put a short code. So, you can create custom widgets that have exactly what you want, but the widgets API to create a new custom widget is actually really complicated. And you need to not only know PHP, but you need to know object-oriented PHP and how to extend the class. It's like, it's complicated. I think a lot of people learned PHP, advanced PHP techniques, just because they wanted to do the widgets, and in WordPress it's one of the only things that you need to learn that stuff for. 
Uh, whereas shortcodes is like some of the easiest PHP that you might have to write for WordPress. Uh, so if you just want to like like the the form for your uh, email list special you know uh, customer relations management email list software thing, and they have some special form for people to sign up, but it's not normal HTML and, and the, the the widget text widget chokes on it. Uh, you know you can write yourself a short code. And then just put the shortcode in the widget, and it'll get replaced on the fly, and it's a lot easier. Uh, and what that involves is just one line of code. Like this is a comic that just says what it's going to do. It's this one line of code that says uh, add filter widget text do shortcode. And what that means is on the widget, it's going to do it's going to process these shortcodes, and any that are in there are going to be resolved into the output on the front of the site. This is really useful if you have plugins, uh, like plugins adding widgets, plugins that add shortcodes are to be respected. They're doing it properly. They are giving you the tools you need. Uh, and it's just a shame that by default it's not in widgets. So bear that in mind. If you ever like have a shortcode for something and you want it in the widget and, you're, you, and it's not working, and you're like, oh well, I'll go open up the template file and I'll just add the PHP function that the plugin also told me about into the bottom of the sidebar so it shows up after the widgets. You don't have to do that. You can add this in functions.php, uh, and then all of a sudden, all of your widgets will be shortcoded. Any questions about that? How do you then make the, the shortcodes that I do you, I, So I don't have um, that. That that would could be a whole other talk, I guess. Although maybe not. As, it's not as interesting as widgets. But um, on the on the wiki on the WordPress Codex, there's an article called. Uh, short codes API, and it gives you examples and runs through the PHP that you need to do that. Highly recommended, the short codes API. Uh, and then this last slide is uh, adding custom widgets. Okay, so this is just the first, this is the, oh, this is the simplest possible custom widget that does nothing and has no features, um, because it depends on something else entirely. Often a custom widget will take up like the, the real ones of things like this go past the floor in terms of length and the complexity is really weird and it's not the easiest thing. Uh, but if you know PHP, really great way uh, to let someone add some content to the sidebar and you can give them lots of options and it's, it's pretty easy to make a really configurable widget. So if you have a client that has a weird need, um, there's it's not that hard to give them control of it through a widget rather than hard coding in their theme. Uh, though you will, like I said, short codes are also a great option and there's arguments for both. But widgets win when what you need is a lot of complexity and making it really, really easy to set settings. Uh, whereas short codes, you can also set settings uh, with parameters. But uh, once again, this one is the widgets API, also a really great a uh, full wiki article that has, like, this is just one section about developing widgets. Uh, it covers all the stuff I've covered today uh, with examples. Uh, and also, like all Codex articles, when you get to the bottom, there's links to people who've written blog posts about it. So but if you go through the Codex, you go through my slides, you go through some blog posts about it, then you can't possibly not be able to take care of yourself. Uh, so this. Uh, that's the end of the talk. Does anyone have any other questions? Yes? Sure. What's a, what's, or have you ever seen like a really kind of creative, unconventional use of uh, like a spaces? You know, um, I've, nothing I haven't really mentioned. I've kind of ex uh, you know, used up all my imagination on the topic. Uh, the real, the real tough goal is just making a theme that makes sense as a really simple theme, but just adds a ton of pieces everywhere as needed. Uh, and I've never actually seen a theme that did that with lots of, like I've seen themes with 16 side sidebars, but I've never seen one with 16 sidebars well explained with descriptions so that the user could sit there in the admin panel and not even look at the site and, and create something and understand it from there. That's to me, that would be the, the most creative thing. Uh, back in the day, people were experimenting with like 
things where it would look like the site and you would drag it to the place, like pictures that would show where the, where the different widget areas are, but it never really worked properly and you know, it always involved uh, guessing. So I can't actually recommend really good ones. Uh, Sounds like you're familiar with Drupal. Sure. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this is the first time I've actually seen one of the advantages that Drupal has in the ability to present the same content in different ways in different places. So it lives in one place, like you showed the one with the blue, yeah. and then on the side. And that's the first time I've seen that really implemented in this way, which is terrific. For WordPress. Yeah. Yeah, there's absolutely nothing stopping you. Uh, Drupal just, you know, click, 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 click. You could sit there in the admin and do it without editing a file. In WordPress, you have to use the functions file and stuff. So I like it that way. I like having one file with the configuration rather than hidden in a million admin many things. Use Drupal. You know, Drupal had this kind of thing way before WordPress did, uh, and it is still more confusing after all these years. So, you, you give something, you take something. Uh, but WordPress made a lot of mistakes. Uh, yeah. Um, so if you had, if you had a widget and there are a couple options where you need like validation or something, you want to run some JavaScript, would you run it on that like within the widget kind of page, like in script there? Or Oh, you can do either one. Uh, if if I what I would say is okay, like as a as a matter of like programming design, if the option is related to all such widgets and it makes sense that way, then then maybe have in your options page some settings for it. Uh, but options related to each specific widget can go in the widget. That said. If there's only going to be two options on that page, forget it. Just put it in each widget. They can change the default each time. Like that would be just a matter of like how much you actually need that whole extra page. Uh, I've seen one widget that had so many settings in it. It was preposterous. It, it, but you'd have to you'd open the settings for that one widget, and it would go way past down. You have to scroll up and down to see all the settings. Terrible, terrible experience. Bad programming. Uh, also, lots of just flat out bugs and that kind of thing. Uh, but for the most part, there should only be a few settings in the widget uh, with some fallback to, to settings. But you can totally call options that were saved inside your widget. That's no problem. Get option works normally. Uh, but it's especially easy to use settings that are associated with the widget. The like, uh, uh, you know, when you're doing this stuff where you're defining a custom widget, they make it pretty easy to deal with stuff that was saved directly into it. It's just right there waiting for you. Can you do a text widget where you would have, you'd show different text on different pages? So, uh, like you have uh, your well, brother's site, that same text would repeat on every single page. Use widget logic. Yeah, the answer there would be if you want, if that's what you need, you want one sidebar, different content, use widget logic, have the same one twice, one for is home, one for is so not So that's you to put the text widget in multiple times? The text widget, all widgets in WordPress, historically there was this really awkward thing where only the text widget could have multiple ones, and everything else it was like, oh, you used up that recent post widget in your one sidebar, and you cannot use it again <laughs> all in any sidebar. Um, and insanely there was a bug where if you change themes, it was still gone. Get the change back to the other theme, remove it, and uh, that was terrible. Right now, all, all widgets, uh, at least modern widgets, because wi they changed the way you define them. This used to be a different system, and so theoretically, some really old plugins uh, or themes could define widgets in the old way. Uh, but with the new way, you can add every widget as many times as you want, and there's no limit. Um, except for logic, like some widgets, there's no reason to have them more than once, but text widgets, you can have as many as you want. And if you use widget logic, you could have the same widget several times, but with variations for each, for each context. And so widget logic is a great way, if, you only, if you're limited in the number of uh, sidebars you have access to, to uh, simulate extra sidebars uh, for each context. So if you're, if you're feeling frustrated with your control over the sidebars, check out widget logic and try it out and see, see if, it, if it solves your problem. Any questions? <laughs> oh, yeah. Where's, where's your slideshow online that Jeremy Clark? Yeah, so jeremyclark.org. Okay. It's the top post. You can find it.
find it. It's at slideshare.net slash Jeremy Clark. Uh, it's a great site. You don't need to put up slides. I could have done the whole thing right up there. Just go full screen and go next, next, next. But uh, I prefer it. Any questions? <laughs>